the literary part of your of your talent. Yeah, I guess That's, so. I'm serious. It is. Go Professor ahead. Dixon, which is really the, uh, I think this poem embodies the origin of the DuSable Museum. Okay. And it's called, What Shall I Tell My Children Who Are Black? Okay. And the, the subtitle is Reflections of an African-American Mother. Absolutely. <clears throat> written in, this one was written in 1963. Mm-hmm. On occasion of the 100th anniversary of the emancipation of our people. Mm -hmm. 18, 1863, 1963. 100 years. What shall I tell my children who are black of what it means to be a captive in this dark skin? What shall I tell my dear ones, fruit of my womb, of how beautiful they are when everywhere they turn they are faced with abhorrence of everything that is black? Villains are black with black hearts. A black cow gives no milk. A black hen lays no eggs. Bad news comes bordered in black. Black is evil, they say. And evil is black and devil's food is black. All that is bad is black. Mm -hmm. What shall I tell my dear ones who've been raised in a white world? A place where white has been made to represent all that is good and pure and fine and decent, where clouds are white and dolls and heaven. Heaven surely is a white, white place filled with angels robed in white and cotton candy and ice cream and milk and ruffled Sunday dresses and dream houses and long, sleek Cadillacs. And angels' food is white. All that is good is white. What can I say, therefore, when my black child comes home to me in tears because a playmate identical to himself has called him black, big lip, flat nose, and nappy headed? What will he think when I dry his tears and whisper, yes, that is true, but you are no less beautiful and dear? How shall I lift up his head and get him to square his shoulders, to look his adversaries in the eye, confident in the knowledge of his worth, serene under his sable skin and proud of his own beauty. What can I do to give him the strength that he may come through life's adversities as a whole human being, unwarped and human, in a world that is full of biased laws and inhuman practices, that he might survive and survive he must. For who knows, perhaps this black child of mine here bears the genius to discover the cure for cancer or the brilliance to chart the course for the expiration of the universe. Mm -hmm. So he must survive for the good of all humanity. He must and will survive. I have drunk deeply of late from the fountain of my black culture. I have sat at the knee of and learned from other Africa. I have discovered the truth of my heritage, the truth so often obscured and omitted, and I find I have much to say to all of my black children. I will lift up their heads in proud blackness and tell them the story of their fathers and their fathers' fathers. And I shall take them into a way back time of kings and queens who rule the Nile, who raise the pyramids, who measure the stars, who discover the laws of music and mathematics. I will tell them of a black people, our black people, upon whose backs have been built the wealth of three continents, Europe, Africa, and America. And I will tell them this and more. Knowledge of his heritage shall be his weapon and his armor. It will make him strong enough to win any battle he may face. And since this story is so often obscured and omitted, I must sacrifice to find it for my children, even as I sacrifice to feed, clothe, and shelter them. This I would do for them if I love them. Nobody else would do it for me. I must find the truth of heritage for myself and pass it on to them. And in years to come, I believe, because I have armed them with the truth, my children and their children's children will venerate me, for it is the truth that will make us free. Of course, I'm not telling my children who are what shall I tell Absolutely them? Absolutely beautiful. That's what That's I will tell them. You, but you wrote that in 1963. 1963. Mm -hmm. And what is it, year 2000 now? Yeah. It's, it's just at apropos Over today. 40 years ago. It's just well. at apropos today. So we keep reading it. It's yeah. And I also wanted to mention the fact that you were a close uh, friend of Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson was really the greatest inspiration of my life. Is that right? I met I, him. Now I saw a picture with you standing side That's by side right. with Paul Robeson. I, I met Paul Robeson when I was... 17 years old, mm -hmm. I first heard him sing down at Orchestra Hall. My uncle, Louis Pierre, bought me a ticket to go down there. Mm -hmm. First time I'd been to a concert or anything like that. It's and I beginning. saw this I saw this man, this tall, yes. handsome mm -hmm. black man. Oh, absolutely. And it was the first time I, sa I felt so proud that I was of the same ethnicity as him, you know? I understand. And you believe me, I understand. After the concert, they invited everybody to come down to the Appomattox Club on 
Let me see. Grand Boulevard. It's, 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 that was South Park later on, King Drive yeah. today. Okay. It was originally Grand Boulevard yes. and South Park, now King yes. Drive, yes. and the 36th block, because in those days, the hotels downtown did not cater to I us I know it, I know it. So we had to have private things. And so they said everybody was invited, so I went, and I got in the receiving line, and I got a chance to shake his hand. Huge hand. And I got a hold of his hand, and then I was struck dumb. I couldn't, I couldn't.